Good morning, guys. This is Joyce, Joyce All Knowing Tarot, and I hope you are having a wonderful morning. Um, I am, actually. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday. You know what? You're in the, at home, and then you're in the house all day, and then you forget what day is it? Is this Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? But it's Tuesday. I'm hoping everyone's having a great day. Um, so just a little memo. So Friday, we're going to go live. It's going to be called The Truth Table. That's what I decided on. One of my um, viewers left that name. I just loved it. The Truth Table. And we will be going live at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'd love to have everybody turn out for that. Um, once again, we're going. To, um, I've, I've got your list of questions. So what I'll do is um, go through those list of questions that you've offered me. We're looking more at um, world events, whether it's political, um, financial crisis, schools, um, whatever your interests are. We're going to look at those topics and um, I'll be reading on those particular topics and looking for your feedback as well. If we uh, in, ran out of questions, which I doubt if we will, um, then we will look in the chat box to answer any more. Um, it'll be myself and um, the young lady I told you about is so good. Um, her name is Mary. It's Crystal Tarot Apothecary. And um, she's going to be joining me on the live as well. So that will be fun. Um, anyways, so that'll be Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I make a real clear point of that because I have my daughter. I'm sort of her a personal Uber driver. So I want to make sure that she gets back and forth to work on time. Um, today, I want to take a look at a few things. Um, I want to look at, is there going to be any election fraud? I think that's very important. Um, I want to look at our schools opening back up again. Or what are they going to be? Is it going to be a hybrid where it's a mixture of in the school building and online? Is it going to be strictly online? Is it going to be back in the classroom? Um, I know that Trump is pushing for that. And also, I want to spend a little time with Betsy DeVos. <laughs> yeah, she is something really interesting. And I just want to um, just take a deeper look at Betsy DeVos and see um, what's going on with her. Is she going to stay the um, uh, Secretary of Education? Is she going to go away? Is she going to uh, allow schools to open up? Is she going to put her foot down to Trump? Um, we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, so the first thing today, um, I want to look at election fraud. So uh, uh, I call her more than just a subscriber. A friend of mine told me about a situation in West Virginia. Um, she actually saw it from another YouTube page, Willie D. And in West Virginia, there was a mail carrier who was collecting all the mail. And when he saw election ballots, he was actually... Um, opening those ballots and changing those ballots from Democrat to Republican. Um, he got caught. So um, there were at least five of them changed and there were some more that had been tampered with and he was changing their affiliation, their party affiliation. So um, he got caught. Okay. And uh, they found out, they asked him why they talked to him and he said, Oh, I did it as a joke. But election time is not a joke. It's not the time to uh, be your most funny. Um, it's a federal offense. It's going into mail. He knows that, okay, as a mail carrier. He does know that that is completely illegal. And you don't even do that type of thing for a joke. So that prompted me to want to take a look. And I'm going to use my, um, my cosmic deck today. There you go. And I want to take a look and see, um, are we going to have any problems or any, any issues with election fraud when we come to vote? Now, I don't know about you, but I also, I already got one ballot for some local um, voting in my community. So we've got th those taken care of. We completed them and sent, mailed them back in. Um, no problem as far as I I know of. So I want to see, are we going to have any problems with the voting? Are they going to, um, are they going to make it, and when I say that, I'm the, them, I'm talking about the administration. 
Are they going to find some reason that we aren't able to vote? Like making it seem as if doing a um, ballot where it's a write-in ballot, absentee ballot, what have you, uh, would not be a good thing for the Republican Party. So let's take a quick look. Once again, I hope everybody is doing fantastic. Looks like they're going to try. I think, oh, by the way, something wrote me yesterday and asked me, was Barr a Capricorn? I think in my haste I might have said that, but he's actually May 23rd. He's a Gemini. <clears throat> Just put that out there for you. I appreciate you guys watching. I always do. I'm always looking at your comments, and I love it. In fact, my daughter asked me, I have four daughters. I have two that live at home. One moves on the weekend. She's moving to Detroit, the one that's teaching there. And then I have my 19-year-old who's still at home. And then the other two are teachers in di different states in the Midwest. But um, my daughter said, do you go back and look at any of the comments or, or comment on the comments? I'm like, yeah, all the time. <laughs> and she's like, why? I said, because people are talking to me or they're saying positive things to me or they're reminding me of something that I forgot, um, all of the above. And so I'm not the type of person to just, you know, well, I don't know you. I don't talk to you. And I said, no, I like to, to engage because it's not my audience. This is like my tarot family here. I love it. I love you guys. Okay, let's look at election fraud. I'm going to do a 10 card spread. Oh, yeah, they're already planning. I get the um, Princess of Cups. That's like the Page of Cup. And so um, there's already a lot of emotions around this um, uh, from the White House. A lot of emotions. And us in general, too. There are people feeling like, really angry that this may happen or this is happening or this is going to happen, that we're going to be um, mailing in our votes. Very angry about that. So much so that they are planning. They are not only just planning on what can we do, how can we suppress this, but how who can we look to to help us? This is like looking, planning, looking overseas. Where can we find someone that's going to be able to help us suppress this vote. Yeah, that and the first thing I have is this woman. This is the um, another Princess of Cup. That one was like the Page of Cups. This is the Princess of Cup. Everything's based on emotions and wanting to do this. In the past, they had the help of a woman. Um, this would be like a, a Scorpio Cancer uh, type of. Pisces type woman, so some woman, this is in the past, that they used to talk to that, that helped them on the last election. And I, could that be Ivanka? I don't know if Ivanka would have anything per se with helping to fix the election, but she could have. I don't know. Um, this is why they're so emotional. This is the five cups. And they are, they see right now that things do not look good for Donald Trump. And the Republican Party. Uh, there might very well be a blue wave again. That could be the emotions right there. 
a real blue wave. But this is Donald Trump. You can imagine that's him. That's his White House. And they are feeling very um, disappointed. They can see their loss better than you can. We oftentimes see just one side of what's happening because um, we don't watch every news channel. We don't read every paper. They do. So they can see um, they are, they've got some disappointments. They've got some regrets, some things they can't unsay, some things they can't undo. Yeah. And this is the seven of cups. This is, uh, them thinking about the election. Okay. This is thinking about the election. This is nothing that nothing has happened. It's the thoughts. What is the outcome? What could be the best outcome? Um, they just do not know. They don't have a handle on it like they did last time. They really don't. Last time they were able to really um, buffalo American voters, American voters that were looking for something real and tangible. And that is not, this is what this, what they've got right now is not what they wanted. It's not at all. Um, what's Donald Trump afraid of? There it is right there. What is he afraid of? People are not going to love him. Uh, and I think he even said that someplace on some interview. Yeah, that's what he's afraid of, that people are not going to love him, thus uh, not vote for him. This is why he is, this is about emotions. This is why he is very emotional. He is afraid people are not going to love him. Why do people need to love him? You know, you're supposed to love yourself, okay? Why? I do not know. Um, right now, here is the Four of Swords, and he's absolutely sick about it. Please don't look, let the bravado fool you, uh, whether it's him or the Republican Party um, in terms of the administration. Um, they are very worried. They are just sick with it. And um, they really don't know where to go because they're getting bombarded on every angle. OK, um, they've got the veterans against Republicans. We've got the Lincoln Project. Oh, Lincoln Project put a new video out. Um, I really like it. I think it's called Courage, Walk of Courage. Very good. It came out this morning. Um, yeah, so they are they are getting bombarded in every possible way. This is what they they want. I guess this is looking for somebody to come through. This almost reminds me of Eric Prince. This is like a Prince of Cups. That they're looking for someone that they can turn to. I, I don't think this is Jared. Actually, I was kind of thinking Jared. It might be. But they're looking for somebody to come up with a plan or idea for them. I don't know why they just don't run on um, on morals and principles and values and stop planning and plotting because that's what this is. Um, ultimately, we've got the queen of, of pentacles here coming through. And this is a female um, woman with a lot of money. Um, dark haired female for sure. Dark haired female. Um, Hmm. I almost know who this is. Anyways, there's a dark haired female around who's helped put a lot of money into this Republican Party election. And the Republican Party election, she's very disappointed, okay? She's very disappointed on what's happening and on the outcome. She's not concerned about, this woman is has no concerns at all about like people or humanity or the insult hurling, none of that. She doesn't care about any of that. Her main concern is winning and not losing more money. And it looks like he is, Trump is a real losing bet for her. I think he made bigger promises than than what he could hold or deliver on. Yeah, whoever this woman is, she's gonna make some type of a change. She's got the know with the know with the the know with all. She's got the the courage, the heart, the money. She's gonna make some type of a significant change as it comes to the Republican Party. Yeah, she's looking for somebody that's a lot more serious minded. Uh, a lot more grounded, more of um, an earthy, maybe an earthy type of person, or at least a lot of earth energy that can relate to people a little bit better. So in terms of, is there going to be election fraud? Um, no, they're going to try to plan it. I can't speak for, for everybody, but they're going to try. There are plans in the work to come up with something, 
but uh, at this point they can't seem to come together on one plan that's going to work that is not going to be you know be seen they have to work in the dark so right now no get those ballots out don't let anyone tell you anything else um the next thing i want to look at is betsy devos betsy devos she's quite a character um, so Betsy DeVos, um, and I live here in Michigan. I've been here for the last four years, so I'm not the queen of everything Betsy DeVos. But what I do know is that Betsy DeVos was born here in, um, she's not a DeVos, by the way, um, but she lived in Holland, Michigan, which is a little town. Um, it kind of is like you are in Holland with the tulips and the windmills and all of that. Real cute town. That's where she's from. She's from a very wealthy family, No, you know, no doubt about it. Um, she went to college in college in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, about 40 miles, 40, 45 miles away from Holland. That's where she would have met her husband. He is the DeVos. Now, who are the DeVosses? The DeVosses are um, Amway people. They are the CEOs, the leaders, the creators, the whatever of Amway. And if you are in my age, or older, you know about Amway, where Amway, you would have these house parties, you bring over your friends and family, sit around, you serve them some little appetizers, maybe they have a cocktail or what have you, and then an Amway person would whip out, come out and bring out all his products. They could be, um, like when, they, when I went to an Amway party, it was like cleaning things and some kind of health bars and, and that laundry detergent and that kind of stuff. And the goal of it is that um, you have the party and your friends come and then they buy some of the things and then you get some benefit or a discount off and you get to choose some products yourself. And then they want to get you, you or your friends signed up into Amway. And then you that friend of yours becomes part of Amway. You're part of Amway. And when whatever that friend sells, you get some. So it's it's actually a pyramid scheme is what it really is. If you just want to be honest about it, they always claim that they are not, but it's always about the person below gives money to the person above. And then I give money to the person above and above. And then it all ends up at the DeVos's house. Um, these people are billionaires. They are worth like $5 billion. Um, the DeVos's have uh, I think five yachts, five yachts. <laughs> what are you doing five yachts? They've got many homes, beautiful homes. They have many things in Detroit and Grand Rapids that are named after DeVos. They, they do um, fund schools and things like that. Well, Betsy, Elizabeth, Betsy um, has never taught a day in her life in school, but she's the secretary of education for the United States of America. But she was a big um, donator to the Republican Party. Republican Party. She was born and raised a Republican. She is a died in the woods um, Republican. She has been on a lot of Republican um, committees and um, uh, PACs and things like that. And she is usually leading in what. In fact, there was one uh, group of Republicans she couldn't be the leader on, and she quit it because she said, "If I can't be." the leader, I'm not doing, I'm not being a part of it at all because I'm not a follower. Um, yeah, that's her. So we can see that in order for her to be in the position she has got, she bought her way into it. And I guess that's probably uh, just how they do it, you know, not just in the Trump administration, but many administrations. So her birthday is January 8th, 1958, and she is a real piece of work. Her number one birthday, I told you, this is the gimme, gimme, gimme. It's all about me. I'm independent. I'm doing what I want to do type of personality. That's when she was younger. That was her growing up. Um, it was all about me. I'm the most important um, a sense of lack of deep, profound empathy and compassion was very much missing from her in general. Her number eight in her day tells me she is a piece of work, honey, point blank and simple. Um, eights are about money. They could either have a tremendous amount of money or they can lose a lot, of, a lot of money. And she has a lot of money between her family, who was already wealthy, and the DeVos family, who are wealthy. And um, 
so she can have a lot but she can also can lose money as well but she's doing real fine right now but that number eight always also tells me she is a real b if you know what i mean it's a like a witch but it starts with a b i mean she can be very harsh very nasty woman to get along with um it's her way or the highway that's what that eight tells me that i'm a boss i'm doing it my way you can do it my way or you can get get on with your life um her last 1958 is that's what the number that she's going into her year and that's a number five as well as her life path is a number five so the question is will betsy devos continue to be secretary of education mm -mm. absolutely not believe me i joyce told you that there's a lot of times i tell you guys stuff and um it turns around and it happens but i don't really bring it back up um it's usually in my videos you can see that it's already documented but betsy devos she will be long gone um uh yeah it's funny too because her personal year right now is a four and a four personal personal year is a very hard year for her four or five well she just came out i'm sorry she just came out of a personal year of number four so that's why she has been taking so much heat so much criticism she had from the very beginning a tremendous amount of all eyes on her people knowing that she wasn't qualified there was quite a uproar here in this particular state her her home state and that that um felt a way about her as a matter of fact now that she's talking about sending kids back to school or they'll cut federal aid um the state of michigan intends to sue betsy devos i'm putting that out there for you that's alleged this is entertainment only i'm just telling you what i know from the inside out uh they will they said that they will sue her if they cut funding from the michigan schools sadly to say michigan is a is a fine state um, it is not one of your wealthier states. Um, we had the auto industry and you know that is no longer here. So um, Betsy DeVos is in that number five year right now. She was in a number four year, but her birthday was January 8th. So now she's in a number five year and it's nothing but changes for her. She is going to go away. She's in what's like called a five, 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 five. So there's a lot of sudden changes. There is a lot of movement and shifting for her but nothing that is really good or really positive um so as i look at her her rising is an airy so she's another one of these people that you ask her to go and do something and before you even finish what you have to say she's off running and doing it without giving it the uh, necessary thought or analysis that something would take she's automatically running and doing whatever she doesn't take the time like i said to think well she's got a lot of courage she's got a lot of bravery um she she'll step out and do whatever is asked of her and that's why she's go, talking about going back to school go sending the kids back to school her son is in capricorn another capricorn uh it's something about these capricorns and gemini's but she's another devoted capricorn highly ambitious that's all she's ever known is to climb the ladder to step on whoever you want to get to that very goal oriented she has a sense of maturity to her you cannot take that away from her um she could be very down to earth it would depend on who she's around because she's been bred in this money kind of world and so that makes her have this feeling of um this this moon feeling her emotional feeling of uh superiority snobbery i'm better than i looked down my nose at i can't relate to your struggles i can't i don't understand um but i i can talk about it for example she's never been a teacher a principal a superintendent um nothing at all and yet she feels that she's capable to talk about schools no you have to be in the trenches before you can understand schools especially children um we can't send the kids back to school kids are handsy they love to hold hands they love to touch they're in their nose they're sharing lunches and because she's not there and i don't mean just walking through the school and taking a visit of the school i mean actually working there she doesn't understand that and they always want to touch you her mercury's in sagittarius that's how she thinks so she is actually a broad thinker she can be a broad thinker but 
she has a tendency with that Capricorn to get stuck in her, uh, what she thinks is right. And that is that. And then she's going to speak on that. And she is going to be very blunt, very harsh, very frank. She's going to speak what she thinks is her truth and no one can tell her anything differently. Um, somebody that you just can't work with. Um, her Sagittarius is it. Her Saturn has a Sagittarius in it as well. So that tells you that she had a very strict fathering uh, lifestyle or the way she was raised and that she has embraced that, that very strict right or wrong uh, law and order. This is the way it goes. This is the way that I like it. And so she's really into that completely. And so she brings that to the table in her life, whether it's to her own family, um, into her position now, into any position. Trust me, she was the person that was the very bossy person. So I want to quick take a quick look at what is around Betsy DeVos. I like my magic cards. This is the magic method. Magic, magi method, actually. What's around Betsy DeVos? What's around Betsy DeVos? Why is she, and I want to know, why is she and many others, well, it's the Capricorn duty. The Capricorns are the type of people they will commit, once they commit to a person, an idea, an ideology, um, anything, they will stick with it, you know, to the end. They'll, right or wrong, they will continue to stick to it. And you can't tell them anything different. They're not interested in knowing anything differently. Okay, let's see. Okay. So, yeah, she's got a very troubled situation. You know what? When you take... Have you ever had that? You had a job and then they wanted you to do something extra and you said you could do it. And then you found out when you started trying to do it, you couldn't do it. That's her right there. Um, first of all, this is her. She is going to be, this is like a breakup. This is the woman. This is her tricky old Betsy DeVos, the fox. That's her. This is the queen of pentacles, the queen of coins. This is the lady that with all the money. This is the lady that Loves the abundant life. She likes the appearance of, okay? She's got the money. Don't get me wrong. But this is with her and the administration. She's going to be breaking from the administration. Not because she wants to. It's because they won't need her anymore. Biden comes in. She's gone. She's going to be gone anyways. But she is gone. Um, the going to school. The religion of it all. No, this is all secrets why going to school this is um this is trinity this is holy this is institutions it's the school the secret is on top of schools why back to school the secrets are right there why because she's been told to do so plain and simple and the light has been shined on her she was able to hide the first few years um not the first year when michigan was in up in arms about her uh, where you guys probably did or didn't know about her, but um, now the spotlight is on her. And so now with her being in the spotlight, her having the pressure on her from Trump and Republicans, um, I'm not going to say all Republicans, honestly, um, but they are, they are jumping to the forefront to um, speak on Trump's behalf about going back to school. She's right there. The problem is that with her being right there and speaking on Trump and speaking on going on back to school, um, it's kind of double sorted for her. She feels I'm doing what God wants me to do. Okay. This is the star of Bethlehem. I'm going to be the savior. I want to do, you know, what my godly or I'm godly ordained to do this particular job. And I'm going to get the schools going. I'm going to get the economy going. Okay. And then here we are all around her. This is the, um, three blackbirds and that is us gossiping, talking, debating. That is us. That's other people in the White House. The administration are like, what are you talking about? Yeah, we don't like it. We don't like it. Nobody wants to send their child back. It is very clear that this is a mistake and that she shouldn't be pushing for him for school to go back. She's saying that this was a hard decision 
This is a hard decision. She's trying to decide, honestly, should I keep going the way Trump wants me to go or go my own way? She's got children. She knows that. She knows going back to school can be risky. She hasn't taught school, but she's got children. Um, ultimately, going back to school is going to hit roadblocks. Her plan is going to hit roadblocks. Why is it going to hit roadblocks? Because you can't hijack people and blackmail people and say, if they don't go to school, you're not going to get funding. Here's the deal. The 10th Amendment allows the state to have powers of their own. And so this one of the things that the state owns is schools, okay, besides some other things. But the federal government doesn't run the schools. The federal government can withhold money from the schools, but then that's hijacked. So around Betsy DeVos is, a, if this is the worst mistake she's ever made, the worst position she's ever made. Will we go back in school full time? We will not go back to school full time. There's obstacles all along the way. And her talking and talking in circles is what she does is not going to allow us to rush back or make us choose to go back to school. The spotlight's on Betsy DeVos right now to say, is she going to stand by her decision? Um, and really, it won't matter because at the end of the day, the state's decide what's happening with the schools, not Betsy DeVos. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you, if I'm not here tomorrow, that you guys come and check out Friday. We're calling it the truth table. It should be a lot of fun. Have a great day.